Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to be discussing the feedforward network with the functional API. Uh, so feedforward is a pretty classic network, not the simplest it gets, but pretty close to as simple as we can get. And what we're going to use it with the functional API, it's a good place to start learning how to use the flexibility that we have access to with the functional API. Okay, so we don't have to just do that sequential one direction type of network anymore. So we park space, importing TensorFlow, uh, importing TensorFlow layers as well, just to make it a little easier to write the code. Uh, and I'm going to make a regression and use the trick test. So let's go there. Make regression, they're fairly complex data sets when you do this. So it works well for just kind of just to show how to set things up here. And so making X and Y, making X train and test. Y test, Y train, Y train, Y test, and train test split here after doing X and Y. Okay. Test side 0.3 and random state 42. Uh, here we're getting started with the way that we set this up in with the functional API is we'll, we set up an input layer. It's no longer inside of the first layer that you have with the sequential model. You can just put it right into that first layer. Here we actually have to create a separate input layer and what we'll do is we're going to give an input layer and an output layer to our model and that's going to make our model and then what TensorFlow is going to track is all of the in in between stuff that we do okay so we have our input layer here I'm going to the way that I connect this is I it kind of looks like multiplication so you're going to take your the output of your input layer and it's going to be multiplied by the input the, the, the next function right here so it's not actually multiplied by what actually is a quirk of Python and you're actually performing this function inside of this other or before this other. So which works well for what we need to accomplish this. It fits nicely. It works well for what we're doing. It's a quirk of Python that this is possible and really just kind of super easy to write. Um, so here's where we're doing the dense or layers dense. And then that is the first layer after my input layer. I'm going to do a drop a layer here and I'm just connecting my dense forward I'm going to go and drop this dfx, right? So here, and then that is multiplied by my drop layer. So the output of that is then multiplied by the, the, my next layer here, and then the output of that is then the next layer, and then so on and so on. But not multiplied, again, this is a function of the form, but it's easy to think of it like that um, and just follow it. But you just have to make sure you make the connections all the way down. And here we're doing some sequential. So this is exactly the same thing that would be available to us in the sequential model in this format. A dense layer to finish out our output. The way that we make our model now, because we haven't actually called the model yet, we called layers. And we're going to find our model is tf.keras.models.model inputs and then a dictionary. And here's my inputs and here's my input function right here. The output my layer right there goes to my input and then my outputs. And notice here there's an S. It is expecting more than one. That's just the general idea. So output and outputs. Um, use mean absolute error for my loss. My so this, this part is the same. So if I make my model, it's the output of this models dot model. So this is the functional API is dot model, capital M. And we compile it and then we can plot it just like we would with a sequential model. Just a, essentially just a sequential model at this point with dense dropout, dense dropout. Okay. Uh, training it is exactly the same. What? Well, sorry, training is not actually the same. Uh, here, you, in your first position, X, you're actually going to give it a dictionary. Here's my input, and here's the, here's the actual data that I'm giving my input. In my output, here's the actual data I'm giving to my output. Okay, so again, it's validation. Instead of a tuple, we do the same thing. X is a dictionary, Y is a dictionary. Okay. Important and just train for uh, 300 epochs, and we finish off with uh, validation loss of 158. Okay. Or loss and you start to get some really strong work with fitting after about 75 uh, I think so. uh, 75 epochs uh, evaluating it we would then be passing in our, our x and y into the evaluate function the same as we did as a dictionary because we can have more than one in, input and output and so it's a multi-input feed uh, feed for it so if we did pca just on one side of the data just to see if we can get a better score by pre-processing our data differently on one side uh, and so PCA is not changing anything. So it could allow our model to perform better. The way a neural network is, is 
it probably won't make much of a difference because we're able to take advantage of lots of the compositions of features as, as it passes through the network and then not exactly the same thing that what a PCA does but some extent is that each vector each eigen uh, vector is a composition of many other features in, in some sense and stuff anyways locked up we're going to just pre-process it in a different way on one side and we're going to do two inputs now so we have an input layer for and there's some naming here i think this is really important when you do it is that when you assign your dictionary you have a way to say this goes to there above i just use the standard input output which is what if you're not going to give it anything, it, you have to call it the input. Let's say these models. This input is because it's the default uh, set. And so input and then output list as well. And then so input PCF calling my, my two layers to different but names this time. And I'm calling my output as well. So everything else is the same. Uh, and then what I do is, so I do my input layers, input layer here. So dense kind of goes to a dense dropout, dense dropout. After my dense layer goes through some processing, as we did before, I'm going to concat and bring in the data that I'm going to have pre process of the PC, or something called PCA here. And I'm just going to concat and then I'm multiplying by one is the input layer and one is the layer from here. So I'm going to concat these two layers, stick them together, and then move into a dense layer like this. And then multiply that cat, concat layer by my dense layer right here. So just kind of attaching it. It kind of maybe better to think of it as attaching it than multiplying it, but we're going to attach this layer on the next layer. And then drop out and stop out. That's it becomes just one channel now, uh, one branch, and we're going to go through this. And then output is one. We're doing a regression problem. Uh, I'm calling this output. So when we assign our x and y, so our outputs, we have two two items in our dictionary now, and we're going to the way that we know which ones are which by the name. So I think it's really important when you have one, one uh, input or output. Okay, the fitter model, then we in our dictionary here, we have the input train, input PCA, and then training the PCA data for our different, or really, really any other data. You can have completely different data. It makes sense. It's super flexible. Uh, but here we're just kind of experimenting with the feed forward. Okay, so then the output, same thing in the validation data. We have the dictionary of two items in the first position of the tuple, and then last position right there. Okay, ready, box. Like that. And then let's look and see how we would set up a multi-output. Okay, so now this is so this is going through the multi-output feed forward, we're going to do X and Y, but notice here I'm going to do two targets now. So we're just going to get two columns, Y train, we have two columns. We're going to do two predictions here. Um, nothing should be super different. I'm using the same random state, so it should be relatively close, but probably not exactly. Uh, anyway, so doing one input this time. So we follow our network all the way through the same way that we did in the first one. Only difference here is doing two outputs. And again, very important, like I talked about, we need to output one output two. I don't know what these are, so they're just two different outputs from randomly generated continuous variable and inputs. And then in the output function, I'm going to have my two items, my two output functions right here. Let's see the way this looks. Branches on the output, unlike this other one. Uh, it branches on as we connect it, came down through the dense layer, and then connected the PCA right here. To that. And when we look at the final scores, I think this is really interesting. Uh, and you can look at this, it's kind of interesting. You have the validation loss and then for each one of the outputs as well. Uh, so the overall loss of the function and then the loss of each output. Okay, and so we see here, you get a little bit better score and for this with the more complexity of a model. Not instantly better, right? And so our losses are a little bit lower. Um, we can do a pretty good Q comparison. I think the thing is, is one important thing, we didn't instantly make our model different, right? We kind of changed the complexity as we went through. We were able to get a different score, um, but this just kind of highlights the beginning kind of stages into how complex we can make and play around with this model. Um, so you can have lots of fun with this, you know, have fun playing around with this. Um, and um, I will see you for the next video.